All right, guys, we got to talk about this Neuralink and Elon Musk. So in the last few months, Elon Musk has been engaging in a massive marketing campaign to essentially try to get the conservative Christian population to embrace him and to embrace his Neuralink product. And what he's been doing is he's been going on Christian and conservative talk shows trying to lead Christian conservatives into embracing transhumanism. And transhumanism is the merger of humans with technology, um, digital technology. And that's what his neural link is. What he wants to do is he wants to place a chip in your brain, which would essentially connect you to a server that is controlled by an artificial intelligence. Now what this would do is it will establish a interface between the artificial intelligence and your mind. And it will give the artificial intelligence the ability to literally send signals to your brain, which could potentially be used to control you. Okay. And most definitely it could be used to monitor everything that's going on between your ears, everything that's going on in your brain. Now, one of the things he's been trying to convince people is possible is that you, if you get this Neuralink installed, you will essentially be able to, what he says, save state, as in what you could do in a video game, like save your brain state. So if you die, your brain state and all the memories in your brain would be saved and backed up on a hard drive. Now, this is essentially um, Satan's counterfeit of eternal life. He's trying to offer you eternal life here. That's apparent, okay? But let's talk about why this wouldn't work, okay? Let's talk about the difference briefly between digital and biological. Now, I could take a picture, a digital picture of Paris, right? And I could hang it up on my wall, right? When the camera takes the image, it, it sees a, a bunch of data, right? And it transfers that data into ones and zeros, which essentially are just positive and negative charges on a hard drive, right? And then when you bring that data back up on the screen, it displays it into something that you can perceive, right? But you're not... What, what you're not doing when you take a picture is bringing the biological material into the camera, right? You're not doing that, right? It's, a, it's just a rendition of what you see. It would be the same way if this Neuralink takes an image or maybe even a hologram image of your brain. None of the material inside your body, your, your biological entity, is, is being captured. It, th there's no material being captured, right? It's just an image. Now, it might be possible to take that image and to put it in another brain, right? To trick that body into believing that it has, or that brain into believing that it has lived these experience, experiences. That may be possible, but Nothing is being transferred other than images, right? Your consciousness is not in those images. Your consciousness is not your memory. And your memory is not your consciousness. They're two separate things. And when those images are being taken, they are being, they, they are being converted into digital data, okay? So your, your, your consciousness is not going to be placed on a hard drive. That's impossible. Okay. So, so it's, it's not going to happen. All right. So in reality, what this person is doing, he is trying to convince people or, or he soon will be trying to convince people to commit suicide because that's essentially what, what would be happening. All right. These people, these transhumanists and these eugenicists, 
They want to reduce the world population by 90%. It's on the Georgia Guidestones. They talk about it in their TED Talks, and they talk about it in the World Economic Forum. This is all out in the public, okay? You can go watch that stuff. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go look it up on your own. Now, the only way to eternal life is through Jesus Christ, okay? Satan's counterfeit, first of all, is not going to work. And that's exactly what it is. It's a counterfeit, okay? And if you want eternal life, you can get it through Jesus. Go read the Bible, okay? Everyone who believes in Jesus has eternal life, okay? That's, that's the way it is. Satan wants to counterfeit that. And that's what he's trying to do, right? So just because, you know, Elon is trying to pander to you doesn't mean that you have to embrace him and embrace everything that he is trying to sell you, okay? So uh, let's quickly talk about prophecy, right? So in the book of Revelation, it talks about the mark of the beast, right? The mark of the beast is in the forehead or in the hand, right? So no one will be able to buy or sell without taking the mark of the beast, right? And now you've got Elon Musk with his Neuralink, which would be in the forehead. And then you've got Bill Gates, which is with his patent 206006, which would be in, in the hand, okay? So these two technologies are out there. They exist, all right? Bill Gates' technology is explicitly for cryptocurrency, and it would be monitoring your body data, right? What uh, Elon is talking about is attaching your brain to the network. Now, obviously, okay, in, in the book of Revelation, the third angel, when he comes after Babylon is destroyed, he warns everybody about the mark of the beast, right? Because once Babylon, mystery Babylon is destroyed, the mark of the beast goes out and it's forced onto people, right? He's, he's warning, the third angel's warning people not to take the mark of the beast, right? He says, anyone who takes the mark of the beast will be sent into hellfire for eternity, all right? He's warning you. That's his job. His job is to warn, okay? And then he says, he points at the saints who do not accept the mark of the beast. And he says, this is the patience of the saints, okay? He points at us, right? He points at us. He says, this is the patience of the saints are on display. Look, they have not accepted the mark of the beast. They are not taking it, right? And why, why does that display the patience? Because we will not be able to buy or sell anything, right? So those of you who might think that, um, you know, you're going to get raptured out before this, I'm sorry, but you're, you're calling that angel a liar, okay? And his, his job is to say, don't take the mark of the beast, all right? So if, you, if you're of the mindset that, you know, you're going to be raptured up before that, really, you know, reconsider your, the position, right? Re reconsider theology. Read what the Bible says, okay? Read it and, and think about every single word very carefully, okay? So, um, yeah, and, and when, you know, so those, those saints will be patiently waiting for the return of Christ, okay? And when Christ comes back the second time, he's going to be coming back with an army. And he's going to be destroying the works of Saint, Satan. Um, so that will be a, a, a joyous event for us, but not for them. So anyways, if, if you haven't read the book of Esther um, or the story of Esther, um, it's a very short story. And you, I would highly advise you to read it uh, right away. So in this story, you've got Mordecai which is the good guy. And you've got Haman, the bad guy. Haman builds these gallows to hang Mordecai. Ultimately, the gallows that he builds are used to hang him, right? He is destroyed by the very device that he created to destroy Mordecai. But before he's hung, he sends out an army to go annihilate the Jews, okay? So the queen, Queen Esther, She's a Jew. And so the order had been had been gone out from Haman to destroy all the Jews. So that would also have included the queen. So the queen goes in front of the king and, and, and she says to the king, 
Lord, Lord, please uh, save my people. You know, uh, would you have me put to death as well? For I am a, I am a Jew, right? Um, and the king says, I, I cannot take back my decree. Um, what I have spoken has already gone out. He said, and I can't take that back. And it's the same with God, right? What God has written in the book of Revelation, he has already authorized. He's, al he's already written it, right? He can't take it back, right? But what does the king say then? He says, he says but what I can do, I can, I can send out another decree to the Jews, allowing them to defend themselves, right? So what he does is he takes his signet ring off. He gives a signet ring to Mordecai. He says, here, take my signet ring. Write in a scroll whatever you want and stamp it with my, use my signet ring. You have my authorization, right? Whatever you write. So that's what Mordecai does. Mordecai writes a, a decree, an authorization to the Jews to kill anyone that wants to kill them and to pillage from those people. They are allowed to take, take from them, right? And that's what he does. He delivers the message to the Jews at the, the final hour when they're surrounded, right? And they take up arms, they defend themselves, and they pillage the people that wanted to pillage them, right? So in the book of Revelations, there's an angel standing in the ocean, right? And in, in his hand, he has a scroll that only he knows what's inside, right? And John was told to keep that those things hidden so that they would only be revealed at the end, right? So the similarity between that angel and what happened with Mordecai is very striking. It's a very striking similarity. Mordecai had a, had a scroll that only he knew what was in it. And, it. and that was not revealed until the final hour what was in that scroll, right? And the Jews were victorious. They defended themselves. They were victorious, right? So what is the takeaway here? Okay, the takeaway is... That decree, that authorization from the king did not go out until Esther prayed to the king, until she begged him for this, right? Now, Esther is a queen, right? And the church is also portrayed as a bride. A bride of what? The bride of a king. Christ is a king, okay? King of king, lord of lords, right? The bride of a king is a queen, right? So... If the queen, the church, prays to the Lord, perhaps he might actually authorize the defense, right? And make no mistake, we're already surrounded. These orders, these decrees have already gone out by Haman. So I beseech you and I urge you to pray Esther's prayer, okay? And to not take the mark of the beast and not let anybody be deceived into taking the mark of the beast. And not let anybody be deceived into committing suicide. Thinking that they will be able to somehow save state. And re-upload their consciousness into another biological entity. Okay? It will not happen. You know, that picture of Paris is just that. It's a picture. Okay, that's not Paris on my wall. You know, I can't go in there and interact with the with the people that are displayed on the street. It's it's just an image. And it would be the same way when he takes an image or a scan of your brain. That's not your consciousness. All right. The life is in the blood. OK, God breathes life into you. All right. And when you die, that consciousness will go back to God. All right. And you will be held to account, just like everyone else that has ever existed. You will go and face the judgment. There's no escaping judgment day, right? And Elon Musk will not help you to escape judgment day, right? If you want eternal life, you repent of your sins and you ask Jesus for forgiveness and you trust in him to sanctify you and to give you eternal life, right? And read what he says, right? So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, don't forget, help out your neighbors.